Hello friends, welcome back to Figure Study, and welcome back to one more Nemesis September video. I know I said the last one, the Aoyi Dark Knight, the uh, oversized KO Optimus Prime was probably going to be the last one, but, well, what can I say, I had this guy in the mail and he showed up before the month was over, so we're doing this now. And for those who are unfamiliar or did not bother reading the title of the video, this is Fans Hobby's MB01 Archenemy which is their take on a Robots in Disguise or Car Robots Scourge. And this thing is pretty cool, but it's not the utterly amazing wow figure that I was kind of expecting. It's not to say I don't like it, and I'm not necessarily disappointed with it. It's just, I guess my expectations were set a little bit higher than what reality will end up meeting here. There are definitely some things about this figure that I'm not super keen on, but it's still a very good figure, don't get me wrong. I, I really like this thing and I'm glad I got it. It's just not quite the, oh, that's amazing thing that I expected. I suppose you could say that's my fault for having those expectations. Anyway, Arch Enemy here, as I said, is Fans Hobby's take on a Robots in Disguise or Car Robots Scourge. And it definitely nails the look. He's a large, long-nosed truck, primarily in black with some kind of metallic -y teal colors and those really nice blood red windows. And yeah, it's it's Scourge. <laughs> but there's some nice detailing here. I like the chrome on all of the rims. There's some nice silver detailing in uh, what I suppose is meant to be the, uh, the steps that you step on to get into the truck cab, though looking at the size of the doors versus the size of these is the proportions are definitely a little off in this truck mode. It's, it's fine, it's just uh, a little bit... These are kind of cartoonishly large. And there's also some nice silver for the fuel tanks and some more of that textured metal. This area here is, at the very least, not overtly robot legs. This area is definitely robot butt and hips, but uh, this area right here is okay. And then you've got the feet poking out. This. This spot back here, I am with a lot of other people on this, where I just kind of wish that the toes, the very obvious robot toes, could just fold in a little bit more to kind of square off the back here. That would be nice. As for the cab section itself, there are these really nice chrome smokestacks. Again, those really nice blood red windows. I painted the lights up at the top there, in addition to the front lights, though them being red seems a little weird. It kind of makes them seem more like brake lights, but whatever. And again, there's some nice teal metallic -y detailing around the hood and also even right around the top here. And the grill is this really nice silver that you see elsewhere. So yeah, it's a pretty nice truck mode. Um, the main issue that I'm having right now, and I honestly don't remember if this was an issue when I first got the figure, so I can't say for sure if it's just me doing something wrong or if it's actually a problem, but this part here is not sitting right. Like it's supposed to come down and in just a little bit more. You can see how it's just not sitting right. And I don't know what I did wrong there. It may just be that it's slightly warped. I don't know. Anyway, there's not much else I can say about this truck mode other than it's very large. So let's do some size comparisons. There it is with the standard-ish deluxe crew. And uh, this is pretty darn big. It kind of looks like Amiibo Samus there could drive this guy, even while wearing her power armor. Of course, I can't look at this guy and not compare him to the original 2001 Robots in Disguise Scourge, because I actually have Scourge. If I didn't have Scourge, we wouldn't be making this comparison, but yes, here he is with Scourge. There's definitely some difference in terms of the molding and where different things go, but I feel like it's pretty obvious that they're meant to be the same style of character, or truck, generally speaking. And here he is with the duck tank. Okay, let's turn this very large truck into a also very large robot. Oh boy. <laughs> this is going to be an ordeal, mostly because of the size and weight and having to carry him, hold him further away from my body. Uh, oh, also real quick before I forget, the wheels, the tires themselves are like a, they're either rubber or a rubbery plastic, but yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Okay, transforming now.
And here we have Fans Hobby's MB01 Arch Enemy in his robot mode looking very, very scourgy. The same stuff I have to say about Robots in Disguise Scourge applies here in that I like how you get more of the gray thrown in and a lot more of that teal thrown in to kind of break up the black. And it is a little bit not bad or weird. It's just kind of a shame that you don't get more of that really striking blood red color for the windows in the robot mode. And I understand that is absolutely part of the original robot design. It's just, you know, it'd be nice to get a little bit more instead of just in the eyes. And this guy looks just off the bat. He kind of looks like just a bigger version of Scourge. That's kind of cool. Definitely hits a lot of the same design notes. These weird kind of designs with the black and gray in both the shoulders and the pecs. These little shoulder gun things, the little knee designs, like all this stuff. Very, very Scourge. However, one big thing that this guy does that the original Scourge does not do is he has thigh swivels. Yes, I know, but it still it still kind of bugs me that that figure doesn't have it because I feel like it could have had it. But yes, this is very cool. Very sturdy, very dense. It's got some nice weight to him. There's definitely some die cast in here in a few places. Um, I believe the thighs here and possibly part of the legs hard to tell for sure, but definitely the thighs. Color-wise, I think he works really well. The metallic -y teal is a little bit dull when you see it with all this gray around it. It doesn't stand out that much, but it stands out really nicely against the black. This is not a knock on the figure so much as the original design of the character when I talk about some of this color stuff, because I totally understand the original Scourge had this exact, not exact, but like a very, very, very similar design. It's, it's fine. Now in terms of the overall proportions, looks really good. Better proportions than the original toy, but the original toy is from 19 years ago, so that's not really a surprise. And while the transformation is very simple, I appreciate how much it accomplishes. Also, I should mention, when I first got this guy out of the box, I did have to tighten things up with some floor polish, which you can see what I'm talking about up there. It was just the biceps, but I still had to do it, and I kind of wanted to mention that because the rotation on the biceps was so loose, he could not hold his sword. Like, if I had the sword out like this, it would just swing down. So now, with a little bit of floor polish put in those joints, he holds the sword a lot better, and we will actually be looking at the sword in a bit. Before we do, I'm going to look at some of the fine details on here, and I like how there are some neat kind of molded details in the shins and whatnot that aren't actually picked out. I know normally I complain about that, but I feel like this guy's somewhat limited color palette overall kind of works by having a lot of those details not necessarily picked out and just kind of, you know, you can see them under the right lighting conditions. There's some pistony detail on the insides of the legs, which is nice. I think it's cool that they do that kind of stuff, but I kind of wish that they had carried that theme into a few other areas of the figure, you know, like maybe done some paint on the insides of the shoulders here or the insides of the forearms or something. Because as it is right now, this is the only real bit of silver and gold you get on the figure at all in robot mode, with the exception of the little bit of silver on the head crest. Maybe they could have brought this kind of design element in elsewhere, as far as like the coloring goes. Anyway, getting back to the details, again you can see those very scourgy knees, and some uh, nice teal-ish detailing going on in the thighs and hips. I've got issues with these. We'll get to that in a bit. More detail through here. I like that they kept that grill. Even though the grill is no longer part of the transformation, I like that it's still there. And then, of course, those pecs and shoulders. And you can see that he does have the hinge doors for, say, a matrix chamber. But as everyone should probably be aware at this point, Arch Enemy's matrix chamber thing has been fused shut. Thing is, as much as people are probably disappointed at this thing not being able to open the matrix chamber. I feel like that is an unnecessary thing to get bent out of shape about, seeing as both the original Laser Prime and the original R.I.D. Scourge never had matrix chambers. Neither of them could open their chests for the matrix gimmicks, so I kind of feel like it's just a, a strange thing to be worried about when none of the original toys did it. That's just me, I'm sure there are valid reasons for people to want a matrix chamber on this particular figure, but I absolutely do not care. Even if it was supposed to have one, I'd probably be happy it didn't have one. Anyway, the shoulders, as you can see, are those extremely large fronts of a truck. 
just pointed upward that Scourge normally has with these kind of cannon looking things. Bringing them around, you can see that uh, kibble wise, he pretty much just has the back of the truck. And looking at how this is sitting right now, how it seems to be sitting flush, I'm feeling like, yeah, there's probably something I was doing wrong when I had this guy set up before. Another thing that I wanted to point out, which uh, you may have noticed during the transformation or if you've seen Wotafa's video on this, uh, this little door here, I've seen people struggle to pull that out to start the transformation for this section. You actually don't have to pull it out. If you just pull this back, it'll move that door back on its own. So you don't actually have to worry about that. So just one more time to show if you pull this back, it'll pull that little door back all on its own. You do not have to worry about pulling this out first and then hinging this back. Hope that helps. As for the head, it is a very Optimus Prime as Scourge head. I like how it's a little bit squared off and how you've got that kind of teal metallic striping going down the sides. This thing is very tight though. I think there's something going on with the screw. If you turn it a certain way, it just does not want to go quite right. But anyway, I enjoy that. Uh, the gray for the face I think is fine. I don't know if it'd look better with silver or not, but the red eyes do shine through pretty well. And the silver for the little crest thing, it's also nice. I don't really have any paint on the sides or back of the head, which is fine because it's the sides and back of the head. And you can move his little ears to position them however you want, which definitely comes in handy for transformation. I do kind of wish that he had a different head that came included with this figure that was more accurate to the original toy. And I know that Fans Hobby does have an alternate head for this guy that is a little bit more accurate to the toy in that it's like doesn't have the huge ears it's a little bit boxier i would prefer to have that head but i'm not buying their trailer just to get it that's like at the very least 90 to 100 bucks worth of plastic and the only thing i want is the alternate head because i have no place to put that trailer i there's nowhere i could put it so as much as i love the giant gun and the other accessories it comes with and the extra head i can't put it anywhere so I would only want the head so I just kind of wish that there was an option to get this guy with that head or to get the head separately instead of having to buy a trailer for it. Now for articulation he can look up and down a bit he can turn his head as we saw there's no tilting because it doesn't have that kind of a joint the arms can go up and down a little bit at this joint and then they can also, you can move the shoulders here, and then here you can bring the arms out even further. There's a pretty good amount of in and out on those arms. I just like to have them up slightly. Another thing you can do is if you have the arms more straight, you can push them in a little bit to kind of clean up that silhouette. But quite honestly, I prefer having them out slightly. I think it just adds a little bit more of a dynamic look to his silhouette. As I mentioned before, there is the bicep swivel, which was way too loose on these arms when I first got them, but it's fine now. You get a slightly over 90 degree elbow bend, which unfortunately, due to the way that this thing is sculpted, you can see there's the, the seam for where the bicep swivel is. If you bring this elbow up past a certain point, it will hinder the bicep rotation. So if you bring it up fully like this, you're not going to rotate that elbow at all. And that seems kind of, uh, kind of bad. It's not terrible, it's just a little bit of a shame that you can only bring the elbow up about this far if you want to maintain that freedom of rotation. I feel like there maybe is a way they could have gotten around that. The wrists swivel as you do. The fingers do open, but they don't open very far. That's really kind of disappointing. They curl in like this, and then they come out that far. That's as far as they go. The index finger even has a separate joint here, but I don't really see the point because all it does is curl the finger in slightly more than the rest of the fingers. Like it sits kind of similar to where they are when it's fully extended and it barely extends any further. And I just feel like that also could have been handled better. So he does have an ab crunch, which is nice. You can kind of push everything down to keep it a little bit solid. You can pull it up a little bit or you can push this up as far as you can, and that gives you more of a, an ab crunch or upper body crunch. The only problem with that is it's not super solid. It's easy to kind of bump out of place. You, of course, get a waist swivel, which is really nice and goes pretty darn far. 
And we'll talk about the hips in a second, but we're gonna do the rest of the legs first. So you get that rotation, which original Scourge does not have. There's a really nice knee bend that uh, if you bend on its two joints, there's one down here and one up here. If you bend the lower joint first, you get slightly over 90. But if you bend the upper joint first and then the lower joint, you get way better. And then for the ankles, you get some forward and some back and quite a bit of tilt. And you can also mess with the heels and toe to uh, give yourself a little bit more in terms of posing options, which is cool. Um, one thing that does bug me significantly about these legs though, specifically the feet, is the fact that you can see this gap here. And this hinge, it's sturdy, but given how heavy this figure is, it's not sturdy enough. So it's pretty easy for him to end up leaning forward on that hinge, and that's not great. So I end up having to put him down and then angle him back to get things kind of lined up where I want them to be, and then just kind of hope that he doesn't lean forward again. Now for those hips. They do go out a decent amount. Not fully 90, but pretty decent. They go back pretty well for how you want something to go back. But going forward, this is the problem I have with this, because they only can go forward that far. That's less than 90, and that just disappoints me because he's got such great knees. These knees bend really, really well, but the hips can't go up any further than that, so you can't do any cool dynamic like landing poses or anything like that. Can't even kneel. Like, he can kneel in the sense that you can have, like, both knees down, but he can't actually do, like, a on-one-knee kind of pose because the hips just don't move far enough. And that's disappointing. You can absolutely say that at least some of that disappointment is my own fault for not paying enough attention to the articulation segments of other videos for this guy, but it's still a bummer. Given how much is going on with this guy and how great he is overall, I just feel like it would have been nice if you could get the hips to go forward a little bit better. <laughs> Take advantage of those knees. And lastly, before we move on to the final size comparisons and whatnot, we've got the enormous sword that he comes with. And this thing is glorious, but it does disappoint me a lot that this can't store in his vehicle mode. I really wish there was a way that you could do that. You can technically do it by just pegging it into the hood of the truck, but that looks terrible. But, uh, as you might be aware, there are these panels on the backs of the shoulders here, and these can be rotated if I can get it going. Okay, I need to pull out the spudger for this. So if you rotate that around, you get this little peg hole, and there's a peg that's folded up inside the sword here. You flip that out, and you can just peg that into the, uh, peg that in, and that is how you can store the sword if you want to do that, and that's, it's okay, it's a place to put the sword, but I do kind of think it would be better. Like, they could have just had a rotating thing, like, right here, and just peg the sword in here or something like that. I just, I don't like it up there, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I feel like that could have been probably placed a little bit differently. But anyway, that just rolls back out of the way and you don't have to think about it ever again. So instead, I'm gonna put it in his hand. And that works much like the Make Toys stuff where there's a channel in the hand and this kind of uh, bar on the grip, which it's not focusing on. And that just slides in and will hold all nice and secure. Assuming I can actually get it to go in as it's supposed to. Oh wow, that's the easiest I've ever got it to go in. This is where I was having issues with the sword. If I could actually bring the camera up to show you where this would, like here it's much, much better. But when I first got this guy out of the box, I would try to hold the sword up like this and it would just like swing right down like that unprompted. And I know it probably sounds like I'm really getting down on this figure. Like I don't like it or something like that, but that's really not true. I do like this figure a lot. It's just, there are certain things that I wish were done a little bit differently, because he's uh, he's extremely cool. Uh, again, I'm really, really glad I got him. It's just there are certain limitations that I wish weren't there. But I got to admit, he does look really awesome when he's standing there with his sword and all that. Anyway, last round of size comparisons. Here he is with the standard deluxe crew, and as you'd expect, the very large truck becomes a very large robot. 
here he is with Scourge, and I'm actually going to bring him in a little bit more. And let's bring Scourge in a little bit more, put them a little bit more close to each other. And again, you can see just how many design cues Arch Enemy takes from Scourge. Like the color placement, a lot of the molding is extremely similar. And I mean that in a good way. I just, uh, aesthetics wise, I wish that he did have a head more like that. And that it came with this figure and you didn't have to buy the trailer separately for that. But even without that particular head, he still looks really friggin' cool. And lastly, here he is with the duck tank. And that is going to do it. That is Fans Hobby MB01 Arch Enemy in his entirety. And this figure is really, really good. It's just, as I said, not the uh, mind-blowing bit of awesome that I was kind of expecting. And that's just due to a lot of small things, like the weird way that the bicep rotation and the uh, elbow joint kind of clash with each other. The fact that you can't really store the sword in vehicle mode, the weirdly limited hip articulation, it's, it's just a lot of little things. And I know I keep saying this, but I just want to reiterate, it sounds like I'm being down on this figure, but I'm really not. I do really, really like this figure. It's just that my expectations were higher than what we actually end up with. But anyway, that is going to do it for Fans Hobby Arch Enemy. What do you all think of this guy? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. As always, art is more than meets the eye, even if it doesn't quite meet our expectations. And now, truly, we are done with Nemesis September. There are no more Nemesis Primes that I own or have in the mail for me to look at. So this is it. This is where we're ending it. And quite honestly, I feel like this is a worthwhile place to end it, because this is, despite my griping, an extremely good figure. However, tomorrow I will have one last Nemesis-themed video for you, where I take a look back at all of the other Nemesises, Nemesis, Nemesi, all of the other evil primes that I've looked at over the past month, and will pick my top five, because I hate myself that much. See you then!